Hinkershire Spirit Seekers Podcast Haunted Asylums Waverly Hills Sanatorium, Kentucky Well regarded It's very haunted Waverly Hills Sanatorium is said to be home of a mysterious woman in chains who can be seen running from the nail abandoned buildings a boy called Timmy who is obsessed with playing ball a girl with no eyes called Mary the tourist room at 502, but the door stands shut if you dare to step inside its four walls. Built in 1910, Jefferson County, Wave, Kentucky, Waverly Hills, and Dorian, was in part response to the TB pandemic that slept, swept through most of the United States since the start of the century. Asylum was instantly swamped with sick patients and had to be expanded almost immediately upon completion. The mortality rate was exceptionally high for TB, the vast majority of those diagnosed dying from the illness. Those who succumb to disease would often make their final journey out of the building through the dive tunnel of 150 metre or 500 feet chute, which used to lower bodies from the hopes of all to the bottom of the hill under which it sat. Due to the accepted thinking of the time, patients were often left alone on the roof of the building as fresh air was supposedly a key beating disease. In, in this, incidentally, enormous people have reported hearing footsteps and voices on the roof. Lights have been seen turned on, been, have been seen turned on in the building, despite the fact that the grounds have no electricity. Room 502 has a it has been the site of at least two suicides. In 1928, a young woman was said to have hung herself in a room. In 1932, a nurse jumped to her death from its window. The site was quickly bought by, recently bought by a private couple who say they planned to open the complex as a four-star result for paranormal enthusiasts and ghost hunters. Maybe they, their visitors will be, get a little more a bargain for it, particularly if they stay in room 502. Trans Alleged Lunatic Asylum, Western, West Virginia. A L E G H E N Y. Trans Alleged Lunatic Asylum has been associated with strange events and suspicious theories since its foundations were first laid. A fact that they said it had sit on 66 acres of ground only added to the fuel that these fairies, 66 being the alleged number of the beast. Some point to the fact that building dimensions are the, the workings of secret and ancient monastic formulas. W- was it coincidence that after the formalization shell had been built by prisoners, special stone masons were brought from Europe, especially to work on finer elements of the stonework. Probably, but it's not got certain cogs turning in people's minds. Construction began in asylum in 1858. It took over 20 years to complete. Well, it was officially finished in 1881. Parents, patients had already been admitted since 1861. Though the initial plan was to house 250 patients, the eventual capacity was over t- well over 2,000. As with many mental institutions and asylums of their time, some of the treatments carried out were regarded as cruel and primitive, including lobotomies and very basic electric shock and chemical treatment. Walls of the asylum witnessed such pain, much pain and fear over the years. Modern day hauntings are well documented with shadowy figures being seen, people being physically pushed against walls, banging heads on pipes and framework, alleged physical perpetration of black demon dog, or when spirit being by paranormal event, been experienced by paranormal investigators. In March 2013, the Goat Research Society carried out their own investigation using specialised recording equipment and managed to record what they claimed were several haunting screams as, it, as well as ghostly voices that respond to their questions. It also captured an image of an alleged shadow person on their video recording equipment. Beechworth Lunatic Asylum, Victoria, Australia.
Over 3,000 patients are said to have died at the Beechworth Lunatic Asylum, also known as the May Day Hales Hospital, between 1867, when it was opened and its closure in 1995. It was now, it's now part of the Lechubi University, T-R-O-B-E. During its transition, workmen would report hearing children laughing and playing, although no children have ever been and nor, no, and see, ever seen and nor were on the site. During the ghost tour of the area, one patient par- parent stated she noticed her son walking to, talking to herself. When questioned him about it, the boy replied that he was speaking to a boy named Jesus, James, who lived there. He puts the people having their clothes p- pulled or, 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 on a regular and uh, as their sightings at the windows and footsteps in the hallways. One of the most well-known sightings is that of a woman who had been seen several times in the hospital grounds under the window as she's thrown out of the of a fellow patient by a fellow patient. She fell to her death. Um, other sightings include apparitions of the asylum staff, the most famous being Matron Sharp. She was said to be a very good hearted nurse who apparently sat and tried to comfort patients who were said to to undergo this electrical shock treatment. In March twenty fifteen a photograph appeared online that seemed to show a ghost of a little girl who was kneeling on the floor of the former asylum. Perhaps what made the photograph all the more chilling that it was taken that it was said to be, be the most haunted part of the building. The Grenville Wing. Grenville Wing. G-E-R. G-R-E-V-I-L-A. Where electric sh- treatment was administered. The photograph was taken by Alan Tyler, who experienced a lot of paranormal activity while investigating the building including an alleged recording of a spirit that told him of no uncertain terms to get out. St John's Asylum, Lincolnshire, England. St John's Asylum has been many names since it was built in 1852, with its final title coming in the early 1960s. Now, is it cheap, uh, cheap that, that appreciate that asylum would Hold more than 250 patients. By the early 1900s, it developed in a community in itself. 1.5 acres of grounds, including a chapel and cemetery, and inmates would grow their own vegetables and generally maintain the land upon the hospital where it sat. In 2010, a photograph was printed in Lincolnshire Echo, which, which probably showed a ghost at one of the windows of the asylum. Other people all have also witnessed strange things on the ground, old, on the old grounds. One of them, one of the more well-known legends of the site, is that of a grey lady who is seen throwing a baby for the clock tower before she too plummets to her death. In October 2010, a month before the photograph appeared in Lincolnshire Echo, totally haunted, did their own investigations on the site. They reported little activity till they made their way to the children's ward. There, they said they heard strange and whif- whispering laughter. They believed to be a little girl crying. They reported feeling like they'd been watched while they made their way around the building. Since following its closure in 1899, many, many, most of the part of the site was converted into apartments and housing, while the other main building remain, is still remaining. The buildings themselves cannot be demolished as they are protected grade two buildings. And that there are current plans to grant them these regular buildings into flats. Povegula Island, Italy. P O V E G I L A. In nineteen twenty two the buildings of the Italian Povegula Island near Venice were renovated as used as an insane sign asylum, they already had a long, dark past. State, legend state that in Roman times, the island was used to contain play victims who were essentially left there to die there. Many wars have also been fought on tiny patch of land, and by the late 18th century, it had become once again a quarantine area of the sick. 
Perhaps the dark history had an effect on the influence of asylum and its patients. Many said to report seeing fi- strange figures and hearing voices coming from nowhere. One legend in particular stands out. A doctor at the asylum decided to perform lobotomies as well as uh, some other macabre and sensitive experiments on patients. According to legend, the doctor began to hear voices of the ghosts of the island who, perhaps in the reproduction of his actions, had turned their attention on him. He f- eventually fell to his death from the bell tower. Further legend states that his body was bricked up in the walls to the asylum building. On the asylum building. The asylum itself was closed in the late 1960s. The stories of strange happenings continued, particularly for those who attempted to put Purchase the land. One family wished to build a vocation home on the island, although they couldn't go into detail why. They suddenly changed their minds and left the island and never to return. Local women state that the daughter of the family had suffered an injury to her face and required stitches to repair. The wound was allegedly caused by a ghost of a spirit that had violently attacked her. Trenton Psychiatric Prison Hospital New Jersey, originally known as the New Jersey Lunatic Asylum, a Trenton Psychiatric Hospital has always provided generally very good care to its patients since it opened in 1848. This was before Dr. Henry Cotton took over. He brought in supposedly new ideas on mental illness, such as much suffering ensued. Dr. Cotton uh, came to the conclusion that mental illness was in fact caused by infections of the body. In order to test and prove his wild theory, he began to move, move patients' infected teeth and even intimate, intimate, amputate infected limbs. He put a review in, on, in 1924 following reported concern about his methods but the New Jersey State Senate eventually approved his practice. He returned to work in 1925. Since the weren't widely used at the time, almost half of Dr. Cotton's patients died under his care. He retired in the 1930s, but his son continued to put his methods in practice well into the 1950s. Most of the ghost researchers and investigators have claimed to have seen Dr. Cotton on the old grounds. Patients, some with lim- missing limbs, have also been seen. However, no photographic Evidence exists to back up these claims. Whittingham Hospital, Lancashire, England. Built out of need to, need to other instructions of being instituted being overcrowded and bursting. Whittingham Hospital opened its doors in 1873. Being right up to its closing in 1995, it's similar with, with mistreatment of patients as well as both physical and sexual abuse. Staff reported strange events happening when, while the hospital was still open. Several apparent ghosts have been caught on camera since it's opened its door. One in particular was taken during a ghost tour of the building. It appeared to show a figure holding a newborn baby. What's interesting is the back in the late 19th century, becoming pregnant out of wedlock, as a, or as a teenager, was enough to get a woman placed in asylum. This happened more than people might realise. The site is guarded as a paranormal hotspot, although there, 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 is, there are tentative plans to renovate the site into a housing project. The site still hosts ghost hunts, both official and unofficial. The site has continued to be reported. Penhurst State Hospital school and hospital, Pennsylvania. Labelled as the shame of Pennsylvania by the media in 1960s, Penhurst State School and Hospital and the investigations into practice that went on behind its doors were the centre of a human rights movement that went, would initially modernise and transform how society itself treated mentally ill. When it opened in 1908, Penhurst not only house of mentally ill, but also for city handicapped immigrants, orphans, who had nowhere else to go, convicted criminal and convicted criminals, essentially. Anyone who was deemed unfit for civilianship was sent there. The facility was almost completely self-reliant, growing its own produce 
and featuring its own on-site power plant. It operated for six years, effectively under its own, own laws. Mistreatment of children were commonplace. A 1968 documentary called Suffer the Little Children finally shined a spotlight on the inhuman conditions at Penhurst. After two decades of illegal battles and executions, the facilities finally shut down in for good in 1987. Since then, Penhurst has been site for investigation to both to, to ghost hunters and paranormal investigators. It appeared on several television shows with strange voices being heard and since the shadows being seen on several occasions. One series even claimed to show the host being struck by an unknown and unseen entity. Apparently the most haunted part of the complex is the Quaker building, where investigators suffer scratch marks as well as brushing from being pushed in the back. Multiple voice phenomena have been recorded in, in this part of the asylum. Richard Saren Pug, a mixed psychic medium, stated that she could sense energy that was akin to a dominic false. Clovis Avenue Centorium, Clovis, California. In 1922, Anthony and Rotate, A-N-D-R-I-O-T-T, built himself in a Stratford mansion. He went bankrupt before long, and the mansion served as a home for the terminally ill. After that, in 1942, it was dubbed the Clovis Avenue Centurion, a place of residence and treatment for the mentally ill. Hospital was considerably understaffed and under- overgrounded. Monotonicity rate was especially high. At times, with no morgue on site, dead bodies were stored in the basement until they were picked up and taken to city morgue. Allegations of mistreatment also surfaced over the years. The facility was shut down in 1992. Emperor, Emperor Tom Wolf purchased the building in 1997. After naming it Wolf Manor, he transformed it into a haunted house attraction. He even hired staff who'd wear silly costumes and frighten people as they toured the built property. However, soon after opening both, staff and sisters began to report spooky events. Cold spots were experienced in many of the rooms. Strange voices could sit, could to be heard, and people even complained of being dragged into rooms by unseen entities. Perhaps the most unnerving, unnerving was the amount of 991 calls that came from the property to the public police to Toronto. Police could, would arrive to find not only was there no disturbance, but the people would even have a phone line connected to it. In November 2014, Simon was declared a public nuisance and admonished by the state. But the building wasn't just up to standard building regulations. Hobson River State Hospital. Pig Plow Keepsie, New York. Hobson State River State Hospital. Pretty insane, opened in 1871. But it would be a further 25 years until construction was fully complete. At the start, only 40 patients called the hospital home. At the height, 6,000 residents were being treated there. It was shut in 2003 and it remained abandoned since, ever since despite plans to turn it into a hotel complex. Numerous paranormal sightings have been reported by ghost investigators. It feels sake as light, in addition to hearing distressed voices, and even seeing apparitions of former staff and patients. People also saw being overcome with feeling of doom, sadness, and sudden depression. If that was enough, objects have been reported to move unaided, for seemingly no reason, that while doors and windows were in a habit of closing of their own accord, people have also seen shadows patrolling the hospital grounds. According to the chilling feel of the abandoned asylum, the body of a murdered woman was found there in 2015.